Hello everyone and welcome back to Pause Player. This is the third episode in my series, Paused. The series where I like to look back and review the games that I played on my channel. Offering not only my opinion, but hopefully some helpful insight for you guys and gals. Maybe it'll be just what you need the next time you're facing the daunting task of trying to decide the next game that you want to play. I'll begin my reviews now. The first game I'd like to look at is Paranoiac. This little RPG horror game is a fun take on the horror genre. You play as Mickey, a young writer who comes to live in her recently deceased aunt's home, but you soon come to suspect that you aren't alone. Every night, a mysterious monster awakens to begin its deadly game of hide and go seek, and you must play the twisted game, or else. There's an assortment of places that you can hide, but unfortunately only one is the correct choice. If you choose incorrectly, be prepared for the consequences. Although it's an interesting concept, the hiding mechanism can get a little daunting and repetitive. Be prepared for some trial and error as you race about the house trying to uncover the correct hidey hole. Adding to the challenging task is the fact that the correct hiding spot changes with each new chase sequence. So good luck, my friend. On the surface, the plot seems generic and simple, but this little game tackles some seriously dark topics. Fear, guilt, revenge, atonement. It's a cesspool of emotions as the story unravels. The characters also add to the driving force behind the mystery of the game. There's really only four, you, your aunt, your mother, and your ever so overly helpful and overly handsome neighbor, Shinji. Each one of these characters have quite an intense, diverse effect on Mickey. None are neutral. They're either there to help or hinder, directly influencing Mickey's already extremely fragile state of mind. The setting is a stereotypical haunted mansion with hidden keys and cryptic notes. Nothing new there, but I would have to say that in my opinion, the uniqueness is found not in the settings or graphics, but in the monster itself. As the plot unfolds, it soon evolves from a faceless creature hell-bent on your destruction into a sympathetic individual who you actually come to care about. Like a lot of these indie horror games, this one is short, about three to five hours long, depending on how quickly you can solve the puzzles and figure out the correct hiding spots. So if you're looking for a quick hit game that will satisfy your need for horror, trial Paranoiac. Who doesn't love a dark remake of an old children's classic? That's what we have with Wolf the Red Hood Diaries. Granted that most childhood stories are already rooted in extremely dark origins, Wolf the Red Hood Diaries is able to add a certain twisted gothic charm to this lively tale. You play as Red, a white-haired protagonist with a chip on her shoulder. That chip, revenge! After receiving combat and survival training from your badass granny, you set out to avenge the death of your parents. Your target, B.B. Wolf, the man not only responsible for the demise of your family, but for the decay of the entire city of Ulrica. Very quickly, a somewhat obscure and modal plot begins to unfold. Some aspects of the storyline, in my opinion, don't make much sense and often the answers just raise more questions. Many times I was left scratching my head as I tried to piece together the somewhat discombobulated plot. The buggy and I dare say sluggish combat mechanisms can make the game frustrating, especially in certain combat maneuvers, but I did appreciate the creator's attempt to implement different combat moves for our girls to perform. Sadly, however, the moves just oftentimes fell flat. The graphics of this game was what really made it for me. The game was mesmerizing and beautifully done. I can feel the love and painstaking effort put into making this world visually striking. The music is also the perfect match, adding to the already haunting atmosphere. All that being said, my biggest complaint concerning this game is the ending. Not to give away any spoilers, but this game ends on a major cliffhanger, and sadly, there is no continuation. The company creating this game ceased production, leaving Wolf in a world of limbo, which made me wonder if many of the plot points that seem so obscure and irrelevant would have actually been cleared up later on in the game. Sadly, as of right now, we'll never know. So there you go, guys and gals, my review for Wolf the Red Hood Diaries. Like cats, love Mario. Are you a masochist who gets enjoyment by inflicting the utmost pain to torture upon yourself? Well, my friend, look no farther. We have Cat Mario. This adorable little Japanese remake of the beloved classic Super Mario Brothers is the epitome of trolliness. The graphics are simple, colorful, like a child's picture, and imitates a lot of the artwork from the original game. Even the controls are simple. You merely use the arrow keys to maneuver your little cat throughout each level, but don't be fooled by the simplistic mechanics. Cat Mario is far from easy. The game obviously mirrors the Super Mario Brothers, even mimicking some of those familiar catchy sound effects you still know even as an adult. 
He plays a cat, suffering and struggling to complete levels full of booby traps and unpredictable adversaries. Trust me on this, over half the time, you'll never see your death coming. Everything could possibly be your enemy in this game. Your opponents range from a flying walrus that appears out of nowhere to the ever familiar flagpole you were always so happy to finally see at the end of each level. The betrayal doesn't stop. Trust nothing and you just might survive this game. However, the levels are not impossible to beat. The game does take pity on you in the regard that the booby traps do not change with each death, so you are eventually able to memorize where the little boogers are and avoid them. And this is pretty much the only way to defeat the game. It's a charmingly modest game that will certainly test not only your patience, but your gaming skills. It's a game that's been described as diabolical, and for good reason. But don't let that deter you. Give Cap Mario a try and see just how far you can get. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Paused. Hopefully it satisfied your need for some game reviews. If there's any games you'd like me to try out and review, let me know. Comment down below. I'd love to check them out. Until I post again, guys and gals, keep gaming.